Hello everyone and welcome back to the third episode of the Crackheads podcast with myself, Kegs. And me, Shannon. Welcome back everyone. For those who are regular listeners, we welcome you back. For anyone new here, this is a podcast for like the gals and the gays or for anyone who's up for a bit of crack. Yeah, think of this as like a group chat with your very unhinged big sister and big brother. <laughs> we are a little bit unhinged like to be fair. Just a little bit. So how have you been? I have been fun David Ozzy to be fair. We've had a nice wee week off I suppose. Not really week off because we were never really off but yeah. it's like Easter holiday so everyone was off in my house so it felt like kind of holiday vibes. Well, I, I, so I done a, a vlog on Friday and I actually said and I was like oh it's a bank holiday weekend and I was like excited about it and I got someone comment on it. It actually it went into request so I just deleted it but someone commented being like bitch why are you getting excited about a bank holiday you literally don't work and I was like yeah hold on a second though <laughs> I was like one like my family my friends my boyfriend is off work so like I get to enjoy that and secondly like I work for brands who are off therefore my emails on a bank holiday are non-existent so like I do get a break yeah but yeah it was it was a lovely wee break so what's the crack this week Shannon the crack this week hmm well, sir, big news story. Big news story that I've seen. Right, tell me. And I've seen it all over social media. And I think it's absolutely vile now that I actually know what's going on. But your man from the DUP, Jeffrey, Big Jeff in jail, head of the DUP. I don't know the ends now if they've been confirmed, but head of the DUP, this is what is confirmed, has been arrested and charged with like SA. That's nuts. All going on for years. But like you're saying, you didn't know what it was at first. So the day that it all, it was the night before or the day off, can't remember, before it was officially announced on news, it was going about like group chats and stuff, rumours, and my boyfriend Kieran had sent me the screenshots on WhatsApp and I read it and I was like, I am not political. So I read it and I was like, it was just basically about Jeffrey Donaldson is going to be arrested and charged with like sexual assault, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Who is that like? Who? So I replied to Kieran and I was like, who's Jeffrey? I thought it was like one of his friends or like someone I knew. <laughs> and then he was like, from the DUP. I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, obviously still a big deal. But like, I thought this was going to be like a personal thing. Yeah. But yeah, disgusting. What the fuck? That's mental. As if he's the person in charge of our country. Literally. Is, he, is, one, it, is that what he well, told? No, your woman... <laughs> Michelle O'Neill's first minute, but is she's he? Cute, I like her. Is he deputy? I I actually don't. I, I don't know. Don't I've never voted a day in my life, and people probably give me shit for that. But I don't like anyone, so you're not getting voted for. And that's proof. Is that not proof? Like, why are we voting for these people who are just like randomly work their way up in political parties? We're voting for what they're going to do for a country, and we actually don't know anything about them. And that just shows because that man's been in the DUP apparently for years and being like heavily high up in things, and he's a nonce. Like, sorry, what? Alleged for... for, for well, for, well for, he's being charged, so I mean, for, I don't know. For, for legal reasons, he's For legal alleged. Reas- reasons, it's ale- allegedly, but like, <laughs> also, there's no, there's no smoke without fire. Yeah, it's a bit hectic, to be fair. That's nuts. Like, yeah. what the hell? And we're trusting these people. Like, no. That's why I ref- I'm just like, I'm not voting. I don't like any of you. I think you're all corrupt and dodgy. <laughs> what do you see me, me getting took away tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Shannon gets arrested because of the VOD. No, that's hectic. So that's yeah. the crack with you. Yeah, what's the crack with you? Tell me the more crack oh, with you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big start to the podcast. I'm like, oh, a lot yeah. of news that information. Was, that was big, yeah. I know I'm just thinking of like newsy kind of things, but yeah. The crack with me. What did you do for Easter? Tell me all. Piss all. Like, uh, like genuinely piss all. Where did we go? Easter Sunday. We got up and went to walk. Went to walk around Castle Ellen, around the lake. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh my God, up there, stunning. I had a wee collab with like this wee cottage up there once. And I was like, this oh, place no is gorgeous. That's where my boyfriend lives. So we got up, went for a lovely walk. I think that's where my sister's boyfriend lives as well. Oh, no there. Isn't it? Yeah, no, he lives in Newcastle. Okay. Newcastle. And me, direction. like, no way. I literally know him. Um, <laughs> he's Newcastle, not too far. But then. And then we had like a little dinner, like family dinner in my boyfriend's house, like a Sunday dinner. It was lovely. Nice. Which makes a big change because like usually on Easter Sunday, well, not usually because you used to not be allowed to drink, but over Easter I'd just be in shine, like blocked out of my mind in the Telegraph building. So this was a very mature Easter compared to usual. Yeah, fair, yeah. chill one. <laughs> what to about be fair, you? My Easter was like the same, like very chill because I've been away for so long, like so many years. I haven't really experienced Easter the Family past few years. Easter? Because I forgot, like Easter hasn't been a big thing in my life the past few years, just been like any other day when I've been traveling. Mm-hmm. And then. I was home this year and I was like just chilling with the family like the family's Christ- or Christmas dinner Sunday dinner with my mum and all for Easter and it was really nice and chill but then I was watching everyone's stories and everyone was out and about and partying with their friends and doing cool things and the weather was nice I was like oh my god I'm literally doing nothing here I'm starting See, to get See the lot only changed in like 
I don't know, last year or the year before or something, the, the bars were allowed to open on Easter. Oh, yeah, because I forgot about it that. It used actually. to not be. It used to be a law that you couldn't. So now you can. So, like, last year. Yeah, last year I was in Chang. Absolutely obliterated. Really? So, it makes a change. <laughs> to be fair, I remember Easter, we used to get, like, buses up to, like, Time and Cookstown and stuff for, like, yeah. Easter holidays when I was way younger, like, but... I, did, I was kind of getting drinking. a promo, but then I went on a walk and I was literally by myself walking around the lock. And I, was I like, love a walk mm. now. I love it. And it's so nice. Like, I love walking in nature around my leg at home with the dog, just myself, with no phone, no distractions, just you in the present moment. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is actually lovely. I don't actually want to be partying right now. Mm. Um, so I'm happy. That I'm actually loving, like, for me, that's said this before, not like a gym person or nothing. I've been loving just like movement. I've been going to Pilates. I've actually said to Dervla. Um, that I go to Pilates with I want to go more frequently Sick. I've been going to do my wee gym classes and I'm actually really enjoying it which is mad I but that. I think it's the whole thing like we were talking last week in our podcast like when you're feeling good you want to do things that are mm. good for you that then make you feel better and it's just like a wee cycle of happiness 100% and you'd be releasing all those nice endorphins whenever yeah. you're exercising but then it's nice endorphins but also releasing flipping serious acid into my muscles because it's been really really sore recently <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so apart from that from it's been great yeah. I must actually join you in the Pilates I've never done yeah, Pilates Tom, before it's so good and it's so handy to me because it's literally in and Donald and I know the girl from Pilates listens to the podcast, so hi. Hey, yeah, it's is bon- it Bondi Pilates? Bondi Pilates, So i seen yeah. them commenting on our TikTok of like the podcast or mm-hmm. whatever, and I thought it was Bondi as an Australia Bondi. No, so I don't know if it's all of them or one of them or what, but they, they were in Australia. I know the girl that I was doing Pilates with worked a lot in Bondi. Like okay. she used to travel for work doing Pilates, so she was back and forth. Nice. Um. So yeah, that's where the, the name came from. And obviously it's like really big in Australia, so. You know what I actually did do that I was going to tell you in the pod? I done this thing on a Saturday called mm-hmm. Yoga Celium. I don't oh, know if you've seen I it on my stories. Oh, i posting something about so, this. So basically I was asked to come and I was basically, I, I, like I said in the last episode, I'd be quite spiritual, but since coming home to Ireland, I've not really been doing any of my spiritual practices as such. And they asked me to come and I was like, this is literally perfect. So what it is, is you do yoga whilst taking cacao, which is kind of like a hot chocolate. I was going to say, it's cacao. Cho- it's it's kind of like a hot chocolate, but it's kind of like, it like makes you feel good, if that makes sense. Whatever's in it, it makes you feel good. Is that the cho- it's meant to be like the sex chocolate now? It can be, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then ma- mushrooms as well. So mushrooms is a type of plant medicine. Some people call it magic mushrooms. Some people go crazy and take it to festivals and stuff like that where you might trip out. But a lot of it is healing. So mushrooms are very powerful healing tools. And if you sit with yourself in an environment where it's safe, people are looking after you and you take the mushrooms and you do the yoga, which is obviously good for you as well. Um, lots of things can come to the surface, like things that you may be suppressing or letting go of and it can show you what direction you want to go in. And it was just such a beautiful day. It was something Sheesh. I really missed. I just really got in touch with myself and it felt so powerful. And was, where was that? It was in Belfast. It's called Yoga, yoga Stadium. I'm definitely going to do the next Is one. it legal? Don't know. Just thinking. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> you're allowed to talk about it. If you're a person who ever wanted to try like mushrooms or anything, see, I'm not about healing, that shit. But it's for, for I healing. I know, but still, anything psychedelic. For, I'm happy with my be mind. Fair enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that if you've a want there, it's, it can be so good. Hundred percent. And don't just randomly be like, I'm going to try magic mushrooms mm-hmm. with loads of random people and like a house party because that's not a good idea. No. It's not to be messed with alcohol. Do not mix mushrooms and alcohol. Mm-hmm. It's like I I see it as a spiritual practice. Yeah, and but do, not to be used in like in a recreational way because that can be dangerous. Yeah, that can be dangerous yeah. for sure. But if you're doing it in like a safe space where these people are professionally and they know what they're doing, like these mm-hmm. are these are like therapists who are yeah. hosting the ceremony, do you know what I mean? So it's a safe and it's a beautiful thing to do. So I'd highly, highly, highly recommend if it's something Very you may good. feel called to go to. So I'd done that and then obviously I was just feeling great for the days after that. So I was, went away with the family for Easter. We went to Monarch I actually Beach. seen I was laughing using the car. Oh and there were your family were listening to the podcast. Oh my god, no! <laughs> I nearly like mommy and daddy put it on, and I thought I was like, "Are you just joking? You're going to listen to this whilst I'm in the back seat?" And they were like, "You just want to listen to them? Like, do not listen to that podcast. Like, you don't understand what's about to come up here right now." And next thing, oh, I shot myself on Paddy's day. Mommy was like looking at daddy, and I was like, "Oh my god, why what are they say? To me? She was like, God, that's disgusting. I would turn that podcast off right now. I don't want to listen to this shit." I was like, "Sorry, mommy." I was like, the, the "Would, you're, would your mom ever call you kegs?" No, <laughs> never. My real name is Cahar, by the way, for anyone who did not know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were kind of disgusted. <laughs> Mummy, Mummy's a bit of a prude, as in like anything to do with like sex or anything vulgar or anything like that. She's like, oh, like she's just kind of, I say that's just that generation. Like, yeah. So she was like, okay, I disgusting. don't know. My mum's a bit of a, a too much, says too much sometimes. And I'm like, oh my God, you're cringing me out. Like, really? Yeah, my mum would be very like that. No. Just, which is a good thing. Like she's open or whatever. But like sometimes I'm like, 
turn it down a notch. Really? Please, like I cringe because I'm not like that. <laughs> okay. Like with, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be like that with mum. Like really open about like sex and all. And then my mum says stuff and I'm like, oh my god. Like even stuff in front of my boyfriend and all. And I'm like, oh my god, Linda, please. See, I'd be very open about sex stuff with like friends and stuff and probably talking about my social media and stuff. Like mm-hmm. I don't really care. But like you wouldn't even dare have a conversation about sex with my mum. Like, no. <laughs> like, oh, I don't like talking about with my mum, but she does. I'm She's fair. a weirdo. <laughs> Only um. joking. Love you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> does she listen to the pod? Probably. Probably. She, oh, she's ever sure I was doing a live with Be Perfect the other night, you know, like packing stuff yeah. on live. And I was doing it with Brandon from Be Perfect and he read it. I was like, uh, Linda from Dundonald and it was my mum ordering stuff from my live. I was like, Mom, like <laughs> That's good support to be fair. Cute, good support like, of mother. But she's everywhere. I love she's that. everywhere. Yeah. Um so yeah, I had a nice week wholesome Easter with the family, but I did want to kill my brother. He is very annoying, sixteen year old moody teenager. If you're watching, he's not gonna watch this, he thinks yeah. I'm embarrassing. Um, but yeah, just want to Is he the one that bakes? Yes, he is. Yeah, to be fair, cute. he's unbelievable at baking. He has a passion at such a young age, which is incredible to see. Yeah. And I know he's going to do well from it. But he's just at that age where he's just very, very immature. My sister's 15 and she just hates me. <laughs> yeah, she just hates me. <laughs> I'm but, just not cool enough for Madison. Yeah, like, we're, we're embarrassing all the She siblings. just doesn't. And I'll be like, how are you? And she's like, fine. And I'm like, I don't even get responses. I, I try and talk barely, to him. I barely get a response. <laughs> it's like, fine. And I'm like, oh, did like, you have a nice day? Fine. Do you like winding her up or is that just me? No, I can't even wind her up. I can't. She doesn't give me a reaction. Oh, I, so Joseph doesn't listen to this podcast, but I love winding him up. I just, just get really good enjoyment out of it because he's so easy to wind up. And I've started filming myself, winding him up and seeing his reaction. And the, the stuff that comes out of that boy's mouth. I mean, Joseph, have you, anyone ever heard you say the stuff that comes out of your mouth? If you don't social media or anything, you'd be immediately cancelled yeah, forever. Yeah, but, but 15, 15, 16 year olds have now got very confident, like crazy confident. Yeah. I, I look at my sister at 15 and I'm like, I never, ever behaved the way you did. Ever. Really? Yeah, like like just above their years, but then I think it's social media. I don't think so with Joseph. I look at him as if he's a baby. Really? So I think because he's maybe, I don't know, because your sister's baby at the house as well. Mm-hmm. Joseph's a baby at the house. And I, I think I was above my ears, years. I was rebelling when I was that age. I was going away to like Maybe it's because I wasn't. So I was, I was a wee yeah. rebellion and I'm, I was way beyond my years. My friends were all older. I was doing things older or younger than what I should have been doing. And I look at Joseph, I don't even think he drinks, he doesn't go out, he's just very, he looks, I look at him as if he's a baby, but I, at his age, don't, obviously this is not good kids if you're young listening to this, no, no one under 18 should be See, listening See, be like to me, podcast. to be fair, I was an angel, I didn't, to, the only first time I went like out, out, yeah. was when I was in tech and I was 17, but like I was nearly 18 and my friends were 18, do you know what I mean? Right. But I never like done the whole like really young teenage drinking Did thing or nothing, I just didn't have a desire to, no. Okay, no, I did. I was. I have stories to tell, but I think that could lead us to the main section in a bit. But yeah. we can talk about all the drinking and stuff when we were younger because of the main conversation today. Yeah, yeah. Um, but first, let's go to wait till you hear the crack, and it's your go, bitch. Okay, so I had a little brainstorm about what story I was going to tell today, and this one I've actually told on social media before, but I think it's a funny story. Like. I can laugh about it now, but when it first happened, like I couldn't laugh about it. Like it was, it, you'll know in a second. Okay, you, fill me in. I don't know. You might have seen the video. I hope you haven't seen the video so we can get a reaction. <laughs> this goes back to whenever me and my boyfriend were first like, just friends. This was our just friends stage that like, we were t- we were just friends. We were like, if anyone asked, we're like, yeah, we're just friends. But we were also standing in each other's houses and going on dates. Yeah. So... One of the first times staying down at his house, so he was living with his mum, dad, everyone, the whole fam bam house. And I'd never met his mum. His mum did not know I existed. Nothing. And well, you were staying at his house and she didn't know you? Yeah, I hadn't met her yet. Okay. Um, so we went out to Quinn's in Newcastle and we got a taxi home and we were absolutely steaming, <laughs> like obliterated. <laughs> And the two of us went to bed, barely spoke because we were so <laughs> drunk. You know, one of them ones, you're like, it's just all a blur. And fell asleep. Right? Shannon's sleeping. And Shannon then wakes up with like what I assumed was my now boyfriend, Kieran, kind of like on top of me slightly, but like looking down. And then I kind of turned and I was like, what the fuck? That's not Kieran. <laughs> like that was, it wasn't my boyfriend. No, I swear this is tr- so true. <laughs> And then I looked and I was like, Kieran's bed's in the middle of the room. So there's no wall at each side. There was a wall beside the bed. So I was like, 
where the fuck am I? Like there's a wall there. <laughs> this is not Kieran's bed. What the fuck's going on? And then I look further to my left and there's a girl with blonde hair sleeping. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? What the fuck? So I just jumped up. So the way Kieran's room is, it's so hard to explain. It's basically like two bedrooms in one. So his main bit of his room is here and then there's a bit here with like an archway just. Right. And I looked and Kieran's bed was there and he was lying in bed. So I like ran. And I was like, Kieran, Kieran, like, there's a guy and girl in this room and I've just been in bed with them and Kieran was just like so I was like fuck I'll just go to sleep right so I just fell asleep and was like what beside the boy and the girl no back with Kieran alright okay fuck I didn't crawl back (laughs) actually can I come back in (laughs) so I just um, fell asleep back with Kieran because I was still drunk do you know what I mean Yeah. so then the next morning I woke up and I was like there was no one in that bed so I was like did I dream am I losing plot did I dream You were possessed. That? I was like, st- like, what the fuck? So I did say to Kieran, and Kieran was like, oh, like, what? So then, like, a couple, it goes, time goes by, and I'd, like, met Kieran's mum. What time goes by is in, like, weeks later? Maybe, like, the next week or okay. something. I can't actually remember. But it was, I know it was Paddy's Day races. Right. Right? Like, you know, it's just happened, but, like, Paddy, the way they do the races in Paddy's Day. Years ago. A couple of years ago. And me and Kieran were going this was the one that I had to be carried out of because I was so drunk. <laughs> oh my God, this in the video, I... Yeah. So he um, he was like, oh, my sister's here. Like, she's up in VIP. Will we go up? Like, you can meet her. The first time meeting her. So I'm like, hi, hi. And she's like, oh my goodness, it's Shannon. The girl that got into bed beside Lois and uh, PJ. I can say <laughs> it because it's like no one now. That, like, she com- whenever I told this story on social media, Lois commented. And I was like... <gasps> but who's Lois oh. and PJ? Yeah. So <laughs> now we know the full story. What happened was Shannon and Kieran had went to sleep, but obviously Kieran's family doesn't know Shannon exists at this stage. So Paula, not me, I was to think who was Shannon for a second because <laughs> you're not calling yourself third person. Third person. <laughs> Paula, Kieran's sister, had been on a night out too, and her friends were like, "Can we just stay in your house? Like, we don't, like, they can't get home or taxi home or whatever." So Paula was like, "Yeah, go into the spare bedroom in Kieran's room." So you're not thinking I'm there. I think it's just going to be Kieran sleeping. But I must have got up in the night. Wait, why were you in the separate bed? This was the thing. So I must have got up and tried to go for a pee because there's an ensuite in Kieran's room. And on the way back from peeing, because I've been so drunk, I've just jumped into the wrong bed. <laughs> but they've came in, not realising I'm like in the corner of the bed and got into bed beside me, fell asleep. He's woke up obviously thinking I'm his girlfriend or something, looking around to be like, how are you at that side? Sees me. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? I run drunk and like, uh. they just fall back asleep. <sighs> and then they... The next day had got up and left for work or whatever. And they said to Paula about like, there was a girl who was in bed with us last night. And Paula was like, what? So she had texted Kieran being like, did you have a girl in the house? Like, what, what's going on? He was That's like, yeah. So, so that was my, my first encounter meeting my boyfriend's sister then for her to tell me this. And then I did then go on to meet um her friends that I was in bed with and like we can all laugh about it now oh my god no, that's Thank hilarious god. why did Kieran not just run then and be like she's a crazy bitch she's met the like <laughs> run away no that probably oh, it was been so like more. I get warm even thinking about it because it's just like the most awkward thing you can do you know when you're trying to like are we, act a wee bit normal whenever you're like first seeing someone or whatever you're and blocked that's just the opposite way to go about things it's the effects of alcohol in it like honestly I have a similar story I don't know if I should tell on this podcast or not but it's just reminded me should I just tell now fuck it go for it fuck it it's not my turn this week but it just reminded me and I was mm-hmm. getting flashbacks I was like oh my god no I want to die this is so embarrassing I can't believe I'm telling this um, years ago when I was like 17 I was like first started to get with boys but it was like pure like in secret and stuff and I on would the have, DL on the DL but I would have got with like straight boys when I was drunk and stuff straight boys that I would have been friends with and that and there was one night, right, I ended up going to this guy's birthday who I'd be friendly with. And I was getting the vibe that he was in the boys. He's definitely not in the boys. I know <laughs> that now. He's definitely not. But I was getting the vibe that he was. And I've, people have said in the past they would have got that vibe as well. I was getting the vibe that he was at his birthday. And at that age, I was just, I don't know what was going on in my head. I just didn't have no common sense. I was just a bit nuts. And it was back at his for afters and his house is a good bit away from mine. I say like a 40 minute drive. And it gets to that point in the night where the party's over and... I no, I can't even believe I'm telling this. I don't know why. I was a wee boy. I was a child. Looking back, I was a child. His like dad wanted to leave us all home, and for some reason, I had in my head, no, I'm definitely going to get with this boy at this night at his birthday. I don't know what was going on in my head. I was like, I'm staying at his house. I'm going to get with this boy. Don't know why it was in my head. It's actually mental thinking about it. Then his dad decides to leave me and this other girl home. So he drives like I say, forty minutes to where near where I'm leaving me home or whatever uh-huh. at like all hours in the morning. 
and it gets to near my house and I'm like, I don't want to go home. I want to stay in his, your house to his dad. <laughs> right. Eager? <laughs> like mental, like absolutely insane. I was insane. What did your dad say? And so his dad brings me back to his house to stay at his house. Delivering you back. <laughs> brings me back to his house, right? They put me, I don't know where they put me to sleep. I can't really remember that type of, I can't really remember where they put me to sleep. Maybe on the sofa or something. So then the next Klinger? morning. Just stay in five Klinger? <laughs> Jesus Christ, just Actual leave the party. 17 year old has issues. She's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, next morning, where do I, I wake up in some random bed? Obviously, I was very, 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 very drunk at that, like that night. I was like, where the hell have I woke up? Wake up. And I'm in this guy's parents' bed. No! I was like, wait, have they put me here? Did I walk in here in the middle of the night? Like, I have no idea. Were they what there? Happened. So then, <laughs> then I'm lying in their parents' bed and I hear like the whole, it was the day after this boy's birthday. So his whole like entire family's in the living room and I hear them all talking and they're talking about me. <gasps> And they're all like, um, they're all like, I can't remember exactly what they're saying, but I was lying in bed and they were basically making out like he must have like problems at home. Like he, that wee boy did not want to go home last night. Like there must be Really, something. you were just looking bucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? They were like, oh my goodness, he must have problems at home. Like he doesn't have a safe place. It's okay. He can stay with us. Yeah. You're just horned to the back teeth thinking this guy's looking into you. This guy was not looking into me at all. <laughs> and his family now definitely think that I've got head of shoes at home. They all but ten years ago, so And then did the dad eventually drop you home? I can't remember exactly he must have <laughs> dropped me home drop me home the next day or something. I think he did. I think he dropped me home in a van. Honestly, <laughs> in a van. seventeen year old kegs. That's so culture. Seventeen year old kegs was unhinged, like the definition of unhinged. That's um, so funny. But yeah, that just came into my head when I woke up in there, his parents' bed. Like did I walk did I go into their bed when they were sleeping at Well that's like, what my you know thing is. Like, thank God I because I've never sleep sleptwalk before. But that's obviously what happened there because I can't remember going to the toilet or nothing. So obviously but that's the only reason I would have got up, do you know what I mean? To go that direction. Yeah. But I'm like, thank God. I only made it to that bed. Imagine I had to took myself and a dander around the house and woke up in like Kieran's mum and dad's bed <laughs> and I'd never even met them before and I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> that <would be laughs> nice to meet over. you. Would his mum and dad I don't like, know, I've not. done a lot of crazy stuff in front of Kieran and he's still here. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. And maybe I should like start like a, a challenge of like, how far can I take things before Kieran will break up with me? <laughs> to be fair, at least you're all already with him. I'm yeah. thinking, I post everything that I do crazy on social media. I'm like, any man that ever starts dating me, if they look me up, they'll be like, absolutely not. I'm running for the freaking hills. But yeah. I'll find my man. He'll Digital be able to me. <laughs> it's fine. So I don't know why I just told that story, but... That's funny. That's um, funny. Yeah, crazy kegs. So that's what I mean. Joseph is that age nearly now. And I'm like, Joseph is like not. He's so sensible <laughs> compared to me. But I was that age. I was fucking nuts. But speaking of being younger, that kind of leads us into our next segment. Yeah, let's move to the next topic. So what is the crack with 90? What are we going to call it? I think what is the crack with? Growing up in the 90s in NA. Yeah, are... like... Na- like 90s Not, babies. 90s babies. Because we were both, I was 1995, you're 1997. 97, yeah. So we weren't really like growing up in the 90s because we, we were, in the we were more. toddlers, yeah. But like, we just thought it would be funny to kind of throwbacks. Throwbacks. Little throwbacks of like things that just aren't a thing anymore. Like it brings back nostalgia. Yeah, I'm excited for this conversation to be yeah. fair. I've been thinking about it the past 24 hours. I'm like, oh my God, remember that? You kick it off then. So where will I even start? So we're actually, we actually, we probably have different, but similar, similar experiences because you're from near the city. I'm and you're from, a culture. I'm, I'm, well... Culture. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wouldn't say I'm a culture, but I'm from culture land. See, like no one get offended, but if you have anything but a Belfast accent to me, yeah, you are a culture. Okay, fair. and that's just it. Doesn't matter if you live in a literal city, mm. you are a culture. If you like, you know, like Armagh is a city, isn't yeah. it? But like, if you have an Armagh accent, you're still a culture to me. Fair. <laughs> see, I you, if you're from you just so you're from the city. So if you see anyone outside of Belfast, they're culture. Culture, yeah. Whereas culture to me is like. On the farm with the brown boots and yeah. the boot. but cuts, which is so cars. funny because my stepdad's actually a farmer. Is he? Do you know what uh, I mean? Yeah. But yet I call other people a culture. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we've probably had different experiences, yeah. but I grew up in a wee small town called Lock McCrory, wee Lock, village. Lock McCrory. Lock McCrory. McCrory. Um. So yeah, it was a wee small town. Fuck! I Tiny. wasn't born there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's easy. Lock, like the lock, lock. like a lake, and then McCrory, like you know the surname McCrory. McCrory. Yeah. Lock Lock um, so it's about 15 minutes outside Oma in County Tyrone and there's not many people there growing up like in my primary class I think there was like 11 of us so we small group like but yeah growing up where do you even start there's so much you can talk about uh, primary school 
And then we went to set. You both went to grammar school, then into secondary school, didn't we? We'll mm-hmm. talk about primary school days first, shall we? Okay, let's go way back. Way, way, way back. So primary school, I. This is a thing. I'm really bad at remembering my thing. I remember Tamagotchis. I remember I used to be obsessed with Tamagotchis. DSs. DSs. Yeah. Did you, did you ever have the dogs game? You had to look after the dog. Yeah. Like mine's definitely all dead, and I always 100%. think about them. I'm like, oh my poor dogs, because I took peace. so much pride in them. <laughs> I and like Sims. Sims, I didn't really play much. But I think you know? this. I think the Nintendos and stuff came out maybe a wee bit after. What about Club Gatchies? Penguin? Did you play Club Penguin? Yes, I was. A Loved Club, Club Penguin. Loved Club Penguin. Like literally used to get like vouchers and all to like buy outfits from a penguin. Oh my god, yeah. I loved Club Penguin. Oh my goodness, I would. I actually want to go back on Club Penguin and is see it what the crack is. Mine, mine. What's the website called? Mineclip. Mine Mineclip. Yeah. Mine clip, was it? Mineclip. Yeah. Like Minecraft's that. a different game. My boyfriend used to play it. He was like addicted to it and said that. If his mum and dad had better internet, because obviously they're out in the sticks. Yeah. If they had have had better internet back in the day, he would have like went pro on like Call of Duty or Minecraft or something because he was a wee computer geek. You see, <laughs> com- or what do you call it? internet and stuff didn't come in. So we, I think the year we were born, like I'm two years younger than you, but the time that we were born, we had the experience of having childhood without technology. And then it slowly started to phase in. Like I remember... The only time I first had a big computer was those big, massive computers with the big backs. The big back, and you on could them. play Snake on it, and that was like the craziest yeah. thing ever. Oh my goodness! Remember Snake on and like on Nokia's as well had Snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nokia phones, and not many people had like phones or anything. Like I remember my one uncle had a phone, and I was See, excited to. be to... fair, I like I don't. I was pretty spoilt with phones simply because I had an uncle who always got the best phones, and I got his hand me downs. Mm. So I was pretty lucky. Like I remember having, remember the Motorola Razor that flipped up. Right, yeah. But I wanted a pink one, but like my uncle wasn't going to have pink one, so he handed me down his black one, and then I got like a Diamante pink cover. Okay, Sick, yeah. thought it was class. What other phones? Blackberry. The, the Blackberry came in teenagers, to be it fair. It was teenage because you'd be Before that we had, you know, the Sonny Ericsson, the ones that spun around. Did you have oh, those? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the Walkmans with the infrared yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, infrared, and you had, you had to... the only way you sent music was through infrared. So you had to put the phones beside each other. Do you remember the only way as well before you had actual music that you could? Limeware. You used to, no, before that, you used to have to record the radio on your phone, and then if someone got a good recording, you'd be like, "Oh my god, infrared me that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. How funny! Infrared's nuts. How what funny! Age then? I think children. Yeah, I think really Primary young. School, like definitely. Yeah. Oh, oh my, my god, goodness, this that's is so, so random. Crazy. I don't know why this came into my head, but I remember High School Musical was like a big thing. I was obsessed with High oh, School I'm Musical. Oh, I'm still obsessed. I would watch it literally any time of the day. I don't think I could watch it now, to be honest. Could you not? I, I know all the dances now. Really? And the songs. I oh, was obsessed. Oh my goodness, see that one of Troy and Gabrielle. It's like, I gotta go my own way. No, for some what reason, a tune. until this day, I am 26 years of age. There's one song that always comes into my head randomly. I'd be driving down the <laughs> road and just start randomly belting out with soaring, flying. There's not a star in heaven. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I love high school musical. <laughs> but this for the cute of my head it was so random. This is so random. I mean, I've been like P six or something, and one of the boys in school got the picture of Vanessa Hudgens with her tits out, <laughs> and then all the boys were sending this round of the infrared on their phones. <laughs> I remember that you'd so be well. like, "Oh my god, that's so hot!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like. Oh my god, she is so fit right now. Okay, as well. <laughs> oh, but I was actually one that is funny. Me and my boyfriend were talking about the other day. Was do you remember Extra Vision? Oh my god, yes. So I think that like we've lost the excitement with movies because I used to love going on like a Saturday night as like a treat and renting out a, a, a video and picking what it was. Even when it turned to DVDs, you know, video yeah. or DVDs, and the excitement to go home then and watch that movie. And it's like you were, sh- you had to watch that one. You can't. It's not like Netflix. You've too much choice. Yeah. But there was one in Donald. There was an extra vision, but there was a different place. I think it was called like Movie City or something. If anyone's in Donald, if you remember, it was in King Square, and. That's what my mum used to go to because randomly, this is like the most 90s, 2000 thing ever. So it was a video shop with like videos, DVDs, snacks, and they had like two sunbeds in it. What? That's <laughs> yeah. such a Belfast like, thing. That's such a Belfast <laughs> thing. So we used to go on like a Saturday, me as a kid, and I'd be like picking out my video 
in this movie place in King Square my mo- while my mum was getting a sunbed. <laughs> oh my god, shut up. How Belfast is <laughs> That's that? That's the most Belfast thing I've ever heard. I yeah. don't even think sunbeds were a thing in Oma where I'm from <laughs> until like a couple of years ago. You like, just had competitions who could be the palest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, literally. Oh, no, I miss extra vision. And yeah. In our one in Oma, we had one a store downstairs where it was the video games, so you could games for like your PlayStation mm. rent out and stuff. And you used to get like the Mario Kart and was it Mario Kart for the Wii? Um, stuff like that. Like I loved extra vision. Yeah. You just don't have that anymore. Kids don't get that sort of excitement that they would have had to There's wait to There's too much option. Do you know what I was just thinking as well? Because we didn't have like stuff to watch on TV and stuff, you remember you used to have the DVD player and you put the DVD in and if the movie's finished or whatever, all you'd have on the screen is DVD player going from one side of the screen to the yeah. next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And you would literally sit, if you've nothing else to do, just sit and watch that because there's nothing else to do. We didn't have anything else to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And did you have Sky when you were growing up? No. So, we had, we had, so you know the way now you've got like fire sticks and like dodgy boxes and stuff? Yeah. Like, the the legal things mm. so this is actually this is such a like 90s also like flipping dodgy dad kind of de- <laughs> deal so before my, my mum and dad were divorced now but whenever I was younger um I'll never forget this like I will it's engraved in my head so it must have been like a Tuesday night right and my mum was like a leader in like this god group I don't know what it was you know, like GB kind of thing. So it was just me and my dad in the house. And I remember my dad like making me turn off all the lights and like be really, really quiet. And I was like, like, is the police coming? Like, what's going on? Oh I was God. like a tote. I was like, what is going on? And like for years, never knew. Like the door was wrapping and my dad was like, Shh. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? Like, uh, like my dad's in trouble or something. Like, you know, something really dodgy, especially being from Belfast, you never know. Yeah. And... It wasn't until like years and years later when I was older and I like asked, I was like, what was that all? I have this vivid memory in my head. Like, was it something traumatic? You traumatized. Do you know what it was? TV license guy. My dad had this box. It was like, it used to call it a chipped box. I think I remember these. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So instead of now you get like a, a fire stick or whatever that has like all the stuff on it, it was like a chipped box mm. and you used to get them like up at Knott's Corner and all. And my dad had one of these and it was the TV license guy at the door <laughs> he was trying to hide from. And I will never forget it. Like the fear going through my body of like, it's Oh my God, your dad yeah. traumatised you he from the TV license box. guy. And I remember like, do you remember DV- DVDs? Like dodgy pirate DVDs Oh my God, as well. and they were the worst quality ever. Someone goes to the back of the cinema, records it and then yeah. puts it on a DVD. Yeah, <laughs> he had a friend that like sold them. I think, ev- I think everyone in Belfast tell me, if you live in Belfast, did your dad have a dodgy friend that sold copy DVDs? I think that must be everywhere because every time, every local place, like I remember my local town had that <laughs> one guy that went around all the houses knocking like, oh, we've got all these new DVDs this week. And so it? right what you say, the person like is recording and you'd hear like the old cough or like rattle Or the with shadow popcorn. of the person funny getting up to walk out to yeah. go to the toilet or the movie. <laughs> Iconic though It was like deals and all The more DVDs you bought The cheaper you got them for 100% But I remember Sky So I always thought The people who had Sky Were like millionaires Like if you didn't have If you didn't have Sky You were poor If you had Sky You were a rich as freak And I remember my granny had it And the <laughs> excitement Going to my granny's house Not to see my granny Didn't care about my granny or granddad Just wanted to watch Sky To watch like Hannah Montana And all the Disney Channel shows Rather than Oh your mum should have got A chip box for you I, I got to watch everything Yeah fair What, did you, what was the good to watch I love like Tracy Beaker and like Hannah Montana, so, uh, Kim Possible, so if you're talking, Girls, any girl if shows. We're causing, if we're talking Disney, I love That's So Raven. Oh my God, I love That's So Raven. That's So Raven. Sweet Life on Deck, or Jack, Zack and Cody. Yeah, Lizzie McGuire. Loved, you know the Lizzie McGuire movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah I loved it. Oh, oh my God, goes, I went. That's going to be me going to Italy next week. I went to Rome and I was outside the fountain <laughs> and she was at. I was oh, no where way. she was, I. I remember I was there by myself and I was like, I'm Lizzie McGuire. You know the bit that's like really iconic and you know the trick the guy to get him to come out on stage? And she's like, sing to me, Paolo. And then he starts singing and he's like, oh, oh, oh. I have a bad memory. I can't remember frig all. Oh my God, you have to go and watch it. Should I rewatch it? She watched it after this. <laughs> I want to dress up as, that is Liz McGuire from that movie as Hall- for Halloween some year. Like one person do the blonde Liz McGuire and one person do the brown haired Liz McGuire. I'll do the, I'll do the brown haired. Yeah, we'll get you a wig. She's I love Hilary Duff. She's gorge. Oh, she's I love her. Because we didn't have Sky, my my routine would have been going home from school, waiting for The Simpsons to come on in Channel 4 at 6, and then waiting until Home and Away is on at half 6. Home and Away! I, I used to love Home and Away. No, I used to, I don't know what, I had this thing, this is actually just, so weird, just came to my head. I thought I was straight, right? And I had this thing where I was obsessed with ginger girls for some reason. Oh. So I went to my granny's house on her big massive dial-up computer that you remember you used to dial up and you had to connect to the internet mm-hmm. and I used to be like ring beep 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 beep, yeah. beep ring whatever and I used to go on Google and I made this thing on Microsoft Art 
of all of these ginger females. So I had like, I had the girl, Nicola from Girls Aloud. Oh, I yeah. had Lindsay Lohan. I had uh, Kim Possible. I had the gin- Possible. a ginger girl from a ginger girl from Home and Away. Like all these ginger females. And I printed out a poster and put it on my wall. It's in fact one of them was a cartoon. <laughs> says, no, I can't make fun of that actually, right? So do you remember? I don't I can't even believe I'm saying this. <laughs> Does anyone remember the Tweenies? Oh my God, I still love the Tweenies. Right, this is no word to lie. What do you call her? There was is he? Fizz. Fizz. I used to be Fizz and Bella. Fizz, I had Fizz, Fizz is the pink one with the brown hair. <gasps> I've got a picture of Do me want- and Fizz on my phone. I'll show you after. I'll show you the podcast. I'll put it up in it. Do you want to hear something so funny? Like, I can remember like through the years who like the first people I fancied was and everything at like different stages of my life. So the first human I fancied was Ronan Keaton when I was like three and then it moved to like one of the people from Westlife. But the original person that I can originally... <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Being like... I have a thing for him. Like Jake or Mo- was it Mumu? It was Milo. Milo. <laughs> Milo the purple tweenie. <laughs> I felt things for him. Like I am not joking. I can physically remember and I remember the switch from Milo from the tweenies to suddenly fancying Ronan Keaton. <laughs> it's like a coming of age. <laughs> like I'm growing up. I fancy a real human now. Oh my God, I was partying with his daughter in uh, Sydney. What? Ronan Keaton's daughter. <laughs> so Set <random>. me up. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, getting up for like best maidens in or something. Oh. Yeah, it was interesting. Oh my God, do you have any songs from whenever you were like in primary school that you really remember? There's this one, there's two songs that actually stick out for me so much. And one of them is London Underground, Underground, those useless, fucking useless C words. I, I, I don't I, even know this song. It's a song that everyone used to play in my class because it had loads of bad words in it. And you when you're so young, you're like, oh my God, that's crazy. You got so much bad words. And everyone used to sing this song. But there was this one song, right? And you say I'm a culture, but I feel like I'm like the opposite of cultures. And like I did, I I think I re- I think growing up where I'm from, I think I rebelled against the countryness of where I was yeah. from. So like country music and all, I fucking hated it all. Yeah. But in primary school, I was trying to fit in, and all the ones in my class were obsessed with this song. And they're all singing it all the time. They all played it all the time. And I probably didn't even like the song, but for some reason I wanted to fit in so bad. I remember what was it? getting the song and probably my Sonny Erickson flip that you spin around and send over infrared. And I remember I got on my bicycle and I spent days and days and days cycling around my house playing the song thing so I could learn the lyrics. And it's even now, I still can't learn lyrics. What song is it? So it's Horse it into you, Cynthia, for your the girl for me. You know you're the one. finest looking filly that I did ever see. You're the onion in my burger. I still know to this day. Just sugar in me tea. So horse it into you, <laughs> Cynthia, for your the girl for me. I literally re- forced myself to learn this fucking song that I probably hate. I, <laughs> I can't believe the podcast has suddenly turned into X Factor. <laughs> X Factor we could talk about X Factor I was obsessed so oh my goodness yeah do you remember Owen Quigg Owen Quigg another one of no and he's on he's on TikTok I keep seeing him and his wife and his kids and all and I'm like no so you're meant to be with Diana Vickers people used to think I was Owen Quigg because I had the same hairstyle same we keep baby face as him and stuff and I remember we were on holidays (laughs) in like south of France with my whole family and this group came up to me like they were English girls I'm like oh my god are you Owen Quigg because they heard the accent no way and I was like yeah 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 I'm Owen Quigg you played along with I was getting pictures with someone all the time pretending I was Owen Quigg them poor English girls are probably out there to this day thinking no, they met <laughs> I was obsessed with him and Dana Vickers I was obsessed with X Factor for years like it was my life and One Direction I was like I was never a big One Direction person and I literally now, like. skipped school to meet One Direction <laughs> yeah but like my mom knew I was like it was an info like I was like I'm not going to school like I'm going to meet One Direction like wait I was in like nearly like a cult were you? yeah so like I had friends and like never met them well I did eventually but like when we first first started talking it was like a group of girls that I was friends with in London who from X Factor met them all the time. Used to like sleep with them and all. Like really? and I became friends with them over Twitter. What so, was the what was the like One Direction fan base called? Did they have a name? I don't know. One Directioners. The, there was an account called like One Day Updates and it was like girls that met them all the time, but there was like all <laughs> different ones. But I became friends with them and they had like you became friends so, with One Direction. Oh my god, like some of the goss I have in One Direction. Like I actually can't even say because it's not my goss, but like the stories we used to get told now, and it's like obvious it was all true. Oh, really? Oh, like such dramatic ones, like crazy. I need things. to find out. I'm gonna tell you one after, and you can tell me if I can talk about it in the podcast sometime. Okay. But I really don't. I think I could end up in jail. Okay. Yeah, you have to be careful that sort of stuff. Yeah. But um. So yeah, these girls used to like get with them and meet them all the time. So they'd find out from them what time they were coming to Belfast at. Yeah. So then they told me. So I was like, a oh, perfect. Like I'm gonna meet them at the airport, and I did. I was like obsessed. Like oh literally used to stalk them anytime they came here. Remember like staying in the Clodden and all. Like really? literally saving up money to stay in the Clodden just to meet One Direction <laughs> when they were here for their concert. 
That's nuts. And like Louis Walsh literally at one stage knew who I was. Like he'd give me free tickets one time in the Clawden because I'd went the night before and I was there to meet them. And he was like, oh, there's more tickets. And I was like, uh, this is not normal. No, this that's needs to chill. You, you need to chill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I was obsessed. Like it was my life. I remember like literally revolved my whole life around watching X Factor. I always supported the ones who were from home as well. Like I remember I used to be obsessed with Janet Devlin. And she all. commented on one of my TikToks the other day. Was, I, she was on my podcast. I spoke to her. No way. I went, to, I went to her house in London to record her on my podcast years ago. No spoke way. About her life. Yeah. I actually have seen her come up and t- I actually am now thinking, did I ever reply to her message? And I feel bad. But anyway. I've seen some of her TikToks and stuff mm. and like she's very interesting. Yeah, she's like, cool. She's came out speaking about how like she went through a really bad time with like alcohol. Yes, yeah, so she spoke about my old podcast. X Factor and everything. Yeah, I was buzzing. Is she I, from your way? She's from near me at home. She's from Gorshin. Mm. But I was like, I was like pure fangirl. I was like, oh my God, I'm getting to, I'm, I'm fucking smashed. I got Janet Devlin on the yeah. pod. Get her on this one. Get I her on the next her. one. I love her. I love her. No, X Factor was a vibe. I used to be obsessed. Who's me your favourite ever contestant? One Direction. Really? Still to this day. I think I used to be obsessed with it. I still am. A little Mix were always like little my Little Mix were very good. I, I never liked JLS. I don't know never why. I had loads of friends that loved JLS. No, um, I remember there was this one song that Little Mix, me and me be obsessed. And it was like, kiss me, kick it, kiss me. Kiss me like a poison. I was moving Is that Katy Perry? No, that's uh, maybe. It was something, a little mixed Halloween version. And ever since then, I was just obsessed. See, to this day, like, I love Harry Styles. I just love him. We've seen Harry Styles together. Yeah. I was on a wee date member. That's right. He's so beautiful. <laughs> He's gorgeous. I was actually just a Harry Styles liker at that time. Like, I liked him, but yeah. I wasn't obsessed. After that. He's like superstar, isn't he? Oh my God, no, literally. He's... After that concert, I was like glued to him as in my number one Spotify last year was Harry Styles because of that concert. Yeah, he's such a king. We love Harry. Love you, Harry. <laughs> I know I actually always think that. Like, if I... I always said I wouldn't. I still don't think. You know, whenever people's like, who would your... Like, what's the word? Like, a hall pass be? Hall pass, yeah. Like, obviously, because I have a boyfriend. And I actually don't think I would have... There's no one that I would, like, like enough to, like... <laughs> maybe Harry Styles. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think know. Harry Styles could just I would need boys. To, Come here. He, no, I think he does. I think... I would need to like be in the situation, which is very unlikely going to happen. <laughs> Harry Styles could like Shannon marry you, but I don't know if it even would be. But he is very, very beautiful. Fair play, Kieran. I've beaten beautiful. Harry Styles. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I think, have you ever watched Skins? Actually. Oh my god! I wish. I always say I wish I could erase my memory to go back and what rewatch yeah. Skins. I think Skins. That's such a like 2000 thing, isn't it? I think it really did send me off the rails. I was obsessed. I was obsessed. Did you with think Effie. you were Effie? I, was I, was, I thought it was Effie. I thought it was Cook. I didn't, no, I didn't think it was Cook because it wasn't like violence. But I was obsessed and I literally think I just started partying loads <laughs> and going crazy because of like... <laughs> to <skins>. be Effie. <laughs> I thought it was so cool. I loved... I, re- I actually remember like... I was going to get her tattooed on my hand, on my arm. Effie's face. I watched something recently that... She She's in the gentleman. The gentleman, oh yeah. I was like, oh my god, that's Effie. Yeah, Kieran's never watched Skins, and I was like, "There's Effie," and he was How like, "What?" Well, I Skins? know, so weird. See, Major Zoo, nineteen ninety five, nineteen ninety seven. Um, Skins was so good. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, maybe like drinking party and all. I had a friend that like used to look a bit like Effie and done her makeup like her, and I'd be like, "Bitch, really? so jealous." Fair. So jealous. I wanted to look like her. She was so cool. Did you ever watch the ones where it was like years later and they were adults? Yeah, I watched that as well. Yeah, I watched oh, them all. I watch it again. Did you ever watch Shameless? Them. No, I never. My mum used to watch it, but like I remember years and years ago, she'd like tell me to get out of the room. Yeah, they'd probably be riding yeah. or something. Hundred percent. She'd be like, "Get out, watch the Shameless." I watched the USA one, and I did, couldn't watch the UK one. Kieran then, watched but... the USA one. He liked it. Yeah, I loved it. So we'll talk about Bebo and all that sort of stuff, shall we? MSN. Oh my god, MSN. Do you remember no. you school on webcam? Yeah, we had your actual webcam at the top of your computer yeah. screen. I remember. So I used to dance when I was younger, like disco dance, and I had friends through dancing and stuff. Yeah, and like that's how we communicated, like going on MSN and going on webcam. And like that was our lives. Like we used to just sit for hours on webcam. And if we'd, oh my god, if do you remember Omega? Oh my god, yes. Omegle. We used to have sleepovers and go on Omega. And, and like, like pure pervy men on Omega. Yeah, but Justin Bieber mocked it up because he used to go on it, and then people. So your aim was to go on and meet Justin Bieber, really? right? So because he used to go on it genuinely. So then, like anyone that was a fan of Justin Bieber, would be like, oh, I'm gonna go on Omega. But then we'd end up on a wiggle with these perverts but we're just like innocent girls looking for Justin Bieber and this man's like wanking uh, <laughs> and you're like yeah, there's such no. strange people on that but yeah that was that was the webcam era yeah Omega. I remember my granny had the computer and my house didn't have computers at that time I used to go to my granny's house and I used to sit in her back room going on like MSN you have everyone who you're friends with in your like and your, caption and, and you if have you fell out with someone chats. you took it out oh my god remember the Facebook chat or Facebook statuses as well, like looks, personality, closeness, and everyone would think, and you rate their looks, you personality, to, closeness. You used to send that round in BBM as well, like if you don't send it, like chain mails, if you don't send this to fifteen other people and you don't get it back from them people, then like 
Bloody Mary is going to turn up in your yeah. mirror and kill you in your sleep. <laughs> I used to believe it. I used to be shit myself sometimes. But like, no, you wouldn't believe it. But you'd like, if you don't you're send it, you're a wee like, bit, a wee bit like, mm, is that going to happen? Oh no. And your other half on Bebo as well. I remember that. Oh my goodness. Like relationships and friendships ended over that kind of Top shit. 16. Top 16. Top 16 was ruthless. I remember I used to have my ex-girlfriend. I was, oh my God. I actually was thinking about this earlier. So my like girlfriends and stuff when I was like, younger, I've had two girlfriends now I have three girlfriends, one of them is happily in a relationship with a man, but the other two and a girl who I went to the formal with are all lesbians. How funny oh, no is that? Way. How funny is that? But the guys just attracted each other as That's teenagers. That's so funny. <laughs> you're all all hiding. You're just beards for each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. Masks, so. Yeah, I loved Emma saying, I actually did a TikTok video kind of about this the other day, about like things that when I was younger, I thought meant made people rich. Right, yeah. But like, that, I'm not going to get into that. But one of the things that was a big thing when I was younger in the school that I went to was like certain brands. So like Jack Wills was massive. Hollister. Massive Hollister, Abercrombie, Canterbury track bottoms. Oh my God, remember Canterbury's? Yeah. And, and we had the big, zip, the big zip that yeah, went the all massive, the way up and the Multicolored and underneath. But when you look back and I, like how basic, like why were we obsessed with these? Yeah. Like I don't, and the ja- Jack Wills I think actually goes back to One Direction. Because really? Harry Styles and X Factor always wore Jack Wills, and that's where it kind of. Oh my God. You know what I actually used to think of the thing as well? Do you remember George Shelley from Union J? Oh, yeah. He's gay now, you know. No, I know that. Um, but like, I, I had friends that were like obsessed with him, and his sister died. Sister um, died, yeah. Yeah. Can't remember how she died. I don't know how I know so much information about him. No, I was obsessed with him. I remember X Factor done a tutorial on the X Factor website of how to curl his hair because he had really straight hair. And then I remember for years I curled my hair. I wonder what George Shelley's doing now. I seen him actually came up on TikTok yesterday. I'm intrigued. He came up, he was promoting That's burritos or the something. Last time, the last time I seen off him, I'd seen something that happened with his sister and I was like, oh my goodness, yeah, what really on earth? I used to fancy him so I think I slid into his DMs. I think I used to fancy him too. Actually I did. Because he, he, they were after One Direction yeah. he was kind of like the Harry new Styles. Harry Styles. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. We could talk about drinking and teenage discos and stuff and then... See, this is the thing, t- drinking and teenage discos. So I was such a good girl. Like really? I really was. Like don't get me wrong, like at the odd we rebellious stage but I didn't like start properly going out or drinking to like I was nearly 18 well 17 because I was in tech but my friends were all 18 so I used like my friend's sister's ID or something to go to Ollie's um but I didn't really do I didn't really do like crazy going out drinking hiding from my mum kind of thing but I I don't think I ever needed to if I hadn't wanted to do it my mum would have let me so I didn't have the desire so my my mum was really strict and I was so rebellious they say that's what it happens so they say like if your mum is strict or that kind of thing then you want to do it where my mum probably if I had asked would you go and buy me a bottle of August she'd be like yeah dead on so I never had the one no mine was quite strict and also me dealing with my sexuality at that age and everything I was just rebelling against the fucking world yeah but yeah I remember I drank so early I was like no one even drank in my age like I don't ever hang before everyone else my age did just to rebel and I also think I was craving attention for some reason when I was that age probably why I'm doing my job now (laughs) It all makes sense. <laughs> it all adds up. Um, but no, I was pretty good, I have to say. When was the first time you drank then? Do you know? Oh, it probably would have been like 17, maybe. Oh, I can't even remember. Like the first time. I remember mine. It was so bad. Well, so we went, so yeah, 17 would have been the year I started like proper That's late drinking. for Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair. Because I remember as well going, we were 17 and went down to Dublin to see Justin Bieber and got like obliterated on Malibu. And oh we God, still Malibu. can't drink oh Malibu. I used to drink Malibu and milk. Like yeah, I, Malibu and milk. That I was so big in the, the Holy Lands. I teenage club lands and I'd be having a, or a jug full of milk, put Malibu in and everyone's like, why the frick were you drinking yeah. a jug of milk? Got a frick of teenage but club apart milk. from that, I didn't do the like rebellious sneaking around kind of drinking. Oh, I did. I was bad. I remember I... Drank. Well, when, when do you think you started drinking? I would have been like 14, I'd say. But <laughs> I remember no one drank. We were, no, I haven't even younger than, I don't even know what age I was, but I didn't, I drank this one time and then it scared me and I didn't drink then for like, three four years after that then it was like i was really young and i literally probably had like a sip of vodka yeah going to this teenage disco where you wear tracksuit bottoms in a jersey <laughs> and for some reason i was probably thinking i was drunker than what it was too and i remember running around this friggin teenage bopper disco in like a community hall <laughs> and being steaming and everyone like circling around me and all and then it was the talk of the town and then we got to my uncle and all and they were like re-drinking i was like no obviously not i remember one time i think it was i don't know what age it was maybe 16 i actually don't remember but like you know the ban parade on the 12th of july so you can like walk the whole parade in Belfast to the thing called the field and then everyone like drinks there. I remember one time my friend was like, do you want to come? And I was like, yeah, fine. So we walked the whole way. I got sunburned from carrying like a, a barrack on my shoulder in a bag. 
and then drank there. That was probably like one of the youngest times I drank. Yeah, fair. But it still wasn't like messy or anything. Yeah, fair. Know. But then I danced competitively when I was younger. So you took that serious? So I danced, I think, like three times a week and then competitions on a Sunday, if not a whole weekend. Sometimes we would go to England. Sometimes. So that kind of took my life, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then after, then whenever I even... 17, 18, 19, 20. I was like looking after my sister doing her modeling. Yeah. So the, like my crazy years only really started and I stopped that when I was maybe like 22. Okay, fair. My yeah. crazy years lasted a long time, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. I was like, I didn't really drink then after that one occasion for years after because I was kind of scared. And then I started drinking at like probably about 16 or something teenage club land days because that's when everyone started drinking properly. But I think culties are actually more. I'm not gonna lie. Not, I know you're not a culty, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like I think people people give like think Belfast is like oh my god Belfast people are crazy and all. I think see when I hear stories from my like culty friends like I have friends you know Cookstown, Newcastle, Caswell, yous are crazy bastards compared to. I would say I would like agree with what that. my friends would be like, and then I always say as well like love love the culties by the way we spoke about the whole. Culty situation and whatever I... Fenian fetish. Fenian fetish. <laughs> but like, I also find that, I think because growing up in Belfast, I don't know, do you have a bit more freedom because it's more accessible to get Probably places and stuff? Well. There's more to do So I always say like, when the culties come up to go to, to go to uni in Queens, or like we're in Belfast and they go to the, they all just go feral because they've been like locked up for so long. <laughs> yeah. Like you just have your teenage discos and all, but it's like prop, proper freedom. I like, do not have teenage discos here. There was some things like, there was a thing what did you call it there was something some of my friends would have went to I can't remember I never went you had to get a bus to it but it wasn't like popular popular if you know what I mean see, we had like loads of things yeah. going on we had like, so we started off and first year we went to like the Craig and Disco and the Rock Disco then we would have leveled up and went to like Teenage Sense and Teenage Club Land mm -hmm. and then went to like Greenville and Overage Time Overage Sense and then Sally's there Mantis used to be different way like da discos like there was like so I went to Grosvenor and then went to Bloomfield and then Campbell's like the boys school that would like, we used to share their swimming pool when I went to Bloomfield, random. But they used to have like discos, this, like but school discs, do you know what I mean? Like right, it's yeah. nothing crazy. There was things like that, but not like things that you would get blocked at. Yeah, so we started getting blocked in the more proper teenage discos where you actually dressed up, not at the ones you wore like tracks and ones <laughs> and jerseys. Like, but yeah, no, it was good crack yeah. to be fair. Gr look, growing up, there was a lot of craziness, to be fair, but it was a good crack at times. At I think times. you're mad. I think you are crazy and you pretend to be little innocent country people and you are all fucking nuts. Insane. <laughs> oh, well, we'll we wrap, uh, wrap up our nostalgia. I'd say we could talk about this for freaking days. No, but honestly, we're th I think we're just like blabbering on now. Yeah. We'll go on to... Um, Dilemmas. Our dilemmas. So moving on to the next topic. Tell us your crack. Tell us your crack. So thanks We've again lost. for everyone sending in all of your dilemmas this week. We really appreciate it. There actually have been so many this week. So I'm just going to pick some at random and see what they say. Shannon again hasn't seen any of them. I haven't really seen any either. I've sort of just opened them and he not really read them. He just opens them and then I'm like, don't tell me I want a natural reaction. Hey guys, love you so much. And because you guys have been my rocks, both individually and social media, I would love your opinion. Oh, thank Aww. you. Appreciate that. Do you think trust can ever be rebuilt? Trust is a very scary topic, but I have been given my boyfriend of almost five years every chance to prove trust to me. And he constantly, and he constantly, and then it goes to part two. Bottom line is, I've looked deep within myself and I don't trust him. How do I go about moving on as I do care for him and love him? But for me, trust is everything. I must mention, I have two kids with this man. So even if we separate, he will still be in some way in my life. I feel like I see no future or past this. I'm completely lost and questioning my own judgment and gut feeling. Mm. Oh, so send, first sorry. of all, send you lots of love. Yeah, did situation. that say he's gave her reason for her trust to be broken? Or is it just that she can't bring herself to trust? Is there a reason there? Uh, she said, I have given my boyfriend of almost five years every chance to prove trust to me. And he constantly then cuts out of what she was going to say. So he has I broke her trust. Broke her trust, yeah. Mm, I think it's so not to flipping her. hard because you can only do so much like you can't change someone mm -mm. and like you can't force someone to change they have to want to change themselves you cannot change someone and the thing is like yes he could naturally want to change and naturally want to suddenly start trying to build trust with you but you can't force that mm. so it's really really difficult because you're like do I hang around for him to like 
fix himself because I do there's a lot of love there whatever but like you're just continuously getting yourself hurt then I think she answered her own question at the end of it as well she said I feel like I see no future or I've passed this like I feel like you know I truly believe like if you're able to say that that you don't think you see a future Mm, that's a big statement like it's time to call it quits I don't want to like jump in and be like break up with your boyfriend you know what I mean but if your gut is telling you that you don't see a future there you're only dragging things out longer and longer and the longer you drag things out the harder it becomes to end things the harder it becomes to end things and the more pain and suffering you're going to put yourself yep. through because having no trust in a relationship is like a no-brainer for mm-hmm. me anyway I couldn't live like I couldn't I couldn't mm. but I get once you're in a relationship and especially if there's love there and a kids it can, involved kids involved it can be really you can just be like I just have to continue with this but like you're so important you have to put yourself first you here you have to put yourself first you are so important and you need to do this for you and if you think that there's no future there and it's causing you issues within yourself because you're not able to trust him and you're beating yourself up you are wasting your life wasting your life for sure and like you deserve love you deserve to Mm -hmm. be in a trusting loving relationship and if he's not giving you that because of his own issues then Mm -hmm. that's on him and it's not really on you and obviously it's on no one and no one ever deserves for someone to treat them badly and break their trust like i i'm just such a big person that like see unless you can say like I love my partner and he is the only person or she is the only person for me and I can't imagine myself with anyone else and I want to be with him forever if you can't truly say that with your whole heart Mm. something's not right yeah and I think it's then time to reflect and be like is this worth continuing I've always told myself that and like I would tell anyone that sit with yourself and say do I sit do I see myself being with this person for the rest of my life? Otherwise, I just don't see the point in dragging things out. A hundred percent. And you are saying as well, like you are d- starting to doubt your own gut feeling, your own judgment. I think you know yourself that you mm-hmm. know you're, you can trust yourself. I think, think you've answered your own question, definitely. Um, and you know what? People come into your life for a reason. People come into your life to teach you lessons. And like maybe they may not stay in your life forever, but everything is a lesson. Everything you'll learn Learning from. Curve. Like mm-hmm. life is your teacher and these are your lessons. Mm-hmm. And this sounds like a big lesson. And this man has given you two beautiful children. They're obviously going to be your grateful life forever, for, so, yeah. Um, he came into your life for a reason. We're not saying. And maybe the thing is too, maybe the purpose of him, yes, he's given you these beautiful children. And at the end of the day, then he'll always be in your life. You know, if he's going to yeah. be involved with the children and everything. So maybe that's the way you are supposed to be. But mm. it's just went through this way to get to that stage. And who knows what, I can't predict the future, but who yeah. knows whatever you may decide to do now, that could maybe be like, shit, I actually need to change now. Mm-hmm. And he might go and do the work on himself. He might try and yeah. change then. Yeah. But yeah, just to trust your gut. And I feel like you already know your own answer, to be honest. So yeah. just listen to yourself, I suppose. Um, 100%. But yeah, we got you. We love you. Love Thank you. you send and love. sending your message. Yeah. We got you, baby. I've been writing my gay friend on the side and now he is going to out me to my girlfriend. What do I do? So this is a man with a girlfriend who's writing his gay friend and now the gay friend wants to tell the girlfriend? What the fuck? That's not very, that's very not, that is very common, sorry. That is a very common situation. But like, when you see it like this. Wait. (laughs) My boyfriend wrote that. Fuck off. No, he didn't, did he? How do you know? But he told, so he was like, I'm going to write a confession in, right? And he was like, I just want to see if you pick it to read it out, right? And I was like, but Kieran, if you, if, if Kegs reads it out, because I don't see them beforehand, like, I'm going to have to tell him straight away. And he was like, no, let him say it a wee bit. Let him go with it a bit longer. And if you just want, cut it out. Shannon, can we stop you there? Yeah. I've got something to tell you. What? Kieran did write that, but I actually am the gay friend he's been writing. This is my time to tell you. <laughs> this was his way to tell me. This no, is this is so funny. Me. Like he was like, I want to write something to you, it's just to, like see if like he'll read it out. And then he was like, if you want to cut it out, that's fine, but let him keep reading it and like say something about it. And then you just show me the footage just to get a kick out of it. But that's so funny, actually. And I was sitting here going like, oh. I don't think because we've so many. So many. I was like, I don't think he's gonna pick it. I don't think he's gonna pick it. But yeah, that was Kieran just being funny. That's a good one. Fair play, but Kieran. to be fair, that's actually, I actually, when he thought of it, I was like, that's actually a good dilemma. That's like, a common and it's one. Very common, yeah. 
he probably thought it was being really out there and you're like no hun that's actually that's common standard behavior like yeah like i have friends who are gay and they're riding married men and everything i'm like that's nuts <laughs> but, straight men, i don't think straight men go near me ever because i used to make years ago i used to do this used to make TikTok, content on exposing it exposing straight boys didn't obviously mention who they were anything to do with people but i told the stories yeah i think that scared off every straight man yeah. ever so straight men never go near me that's so funny um we do one more i couldn't not laugh i was like no don't laugh just let him see what he says <laughs> and then i couldn't that was a good one <laughs> Fair play, Kieran. Kieran's weird. Um, so I said, can't help but think my brother is secretly vaping in my house. He's older. How do I find out if he is or not? I oh, feel like this sounds. <laughs> let him be. Let him fucking vape. Let him be. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He's going to do it regardless. That is my honest advice. Let him be. Please talk about open relationships within the gays. I'm kind of down for it, but the guy I'm seeing isn't. What's your thoughts on open relationships? Personally, mm. couldn't do it. Yeah. Like, no way. No, mm. no, 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 no way. But if you're into it, go for me for it. personally, I don't know if I, I don't know. I think I need to be in the situation to see. I feel like I could be quite jealous and the jealous type. But oh, hundred percent. From being in the gay world and seeing the way gays go on, and that ninety percent of gay couples are in open relationships. Really? And, oh my god, it's crazy. When I was in Sydney, I didn't meet one couple that weren't open, and like they'd all go out together. So like, every, if you go to gay clubs, like proper gay clubs, like everyone be passing each other around, like we're all kissing mm-hmm. each other, and everyone's just kissing everyone. And like the gay couples go out and like couples and like we just kiss everyone or beside each other and like that's fine. So like ninety percent, you would say. I wouldn't say ninety percent, but, but like, like a, a lot. lot. Yeah, a lot. Of open uh-huh, interesting. Um, so I think it would depend on how long I've been with my partner. If we'd be open to it together, and obviously you have to set boundaries. Boundaries you need to be very clear. Um, yeah, definitely. Like not, I would never even slightly even consider it in my mind. Like I just know. Not a fucking hope. I do you know what I mean? The gay world is very different than the straight like, world. Not a hope. Like even the idea of like a three. So, but you know what it is as well like you don't fancy the same people if you're in a gay couple they both fancy the same person oh yeah that's also true but even still I'm just too jealous like a hundred percent and then even just like on an emotional basis of jealousy like I just don't like the idea of the person that I'm going to like be with for the rest of my life even having like an emotional connection with someone else yeah fair I'm like no like not even a sexual way just like an emotional way I'm like no, like me and you have this special thing mm, going on. I love that. And it's energy as well, like sex yeah. and energy. I think with me, I think I would be open to it, but the boundaries would be that we don't do it separately. Like we're not going oh, to separate yeah. dates. We're not shagging people separately. If we were going to be open, we go out and we pull people together, like we'd be out mm-hmm. together. Or like we may have like a threesome or a foursome and people can get involved in us two there, but I wouldn't do it separately. Not a chance. I wouldn't mm. be up for that. Um, but yeah, if you're down for it and the guy you're seeing isn't, that's just a conversation you kind, And you kind of need to respect his boundaries in that too. Mm. So like, you know, if you disagree, if it's something you really want to do and he really doesn't, then yeah. do you know what I mean? It's just, you can't force one or the other to be okay with. And it's not going to work if you're going to force someone to do something that they want to do, really. Yeah. So you kind of just have to either, you can't force it. You can't. No. You either need to go elsewhere to get someone that is going to respect, you know, want to do that. But you, yeah, you can't force someone into that kind of thing because I know for a fact if my boyfriend came to me and was like <laughs> I like I want to be in an open relationship I would literally be like bye Done. goodbye see you later like even if he suggested I think I would take it really really, really? bad because I'd be like we're I think I'd be like we're in two different wavelengths here yeah maybe do you get me mm. could be as you said it's different I suppose if because if you're in a gay relationship you fancy the same person but I just would take it so bad I would be like am I not enough yeah, you would get and that. And not that it means that, because like, I get that people are just open to it and just enjoy. I think a lot of it in the gay world is validation. So if you're going out and you're pulling, you get the sense of validation. It gives you an ego boost. I think a lot of it is that. I notice myself when I'm out drinking in the gay clubs, I'm a slut. <laughs> <laughs> I kiss everyone and then I'm like, am I doing that because I fancy these people or am I doing that to get like external validation yeah. and I get like an ego boost when I'm drunk? But then there is just people like maybe that person that's interested in it. There are people that are just like very Funny. sexually <laughs> open and just yeah. like like the idea of just having sex with different people and yeah you know see i've had i've been in situations where in the past year where i've been like in situations where there's been like multiple people involved in like sexual encounters at the same time and they've been really really fun so that's why i'm like mm, i would be you maybe can open to pe- why people and are I would love to be i would love to be in those situations with like load, this is a lot of information um i would love to be in one of those situations with like my partner who i loved with other and people. like-minded people yeah no, still a no for me. Not going to lie. Gonna ha- so, yes, thank you so much, everyone, for sending in your dilemmas once again. We actually have loads that we didn't get answered, so we'll try and get them answered next week. 
Um, and if you want to send any of your dilemmas in or any crazy stories that you may have, send them to crackheadspod at outlook.com or the day before we do the pod, we have it up in our stories usually. Um, not next week though, because next week we're both on our holidays. Yeah, so we've already done next week. St- we're, we've pre-recorded. So, well, it will be pre-recorded. But yeah, we're going to be on holidays. And then when we come back, we're going to have so much to We're going to have so much banter to talk about. I actually can't wait. But can't wait. yeah, thank you so much for listening. If you want we to do yes. us a huge favour and hit and follow hit and subscribe just so you don't miss out on the podcast and it also helps us out more than you know because yeah we love doing this we want to keep doing it you know what yeah, I mean so your support love means the absolute world so yeah thank you so much and we oh, will yeah, s- also let us know if you are a YouTube watcher is the quality better? We got oh a camera. God, yes, I forgot to say. It is, it's a lot more work than th- just using our phones, but we want to make this as good as possible. So let us know your feedback. We want to keep improving as much as possible. Hopefully maybe at a stage, get two cameras, get some editors in. Mm. But yeah, let us know what you think because yeah. we really, your your feedback means everything. Yeah. Thank you so much. We, we love, love you. Bye. Yeah.